Well, here now is quite something today. Uh, sure to me, there's an offensive by Hamas against the state of Israel. Uh, there sure is. Large scale, big time. This is it. Uh, well, this government is going to be very, you know, uh, bloody. It's going to uh, try to pulverize Gaza, but uh, Palestinians are ready for it. They're ready to fight. So, you know, this is not just a one-way fight anymore. You know, this is no longer just Israel <clears throat> and the military, you know, bashing the Palestinians day after day, killing Palestinians day after day, every day. Now, it, it's uh, you know the table is turned. Well, that's the that's the that's the when I sent out my communiques this morning, asking people when when will, when will they rally outside the Israeli embassy, or how will the world show their support for Palestinian freedom? Yeah, I kind of I kind of just raise the question: Will you show support? Because it seems as though Israel cannot. Israel is immune from any kind of criticism when it comes to the West Bank, Gaza, or um and the um and the um Golan Heights. Hmm. Israel can do uh, Israel has the Golan Heights. People forget about the Golan Heights, they're still from Syria. Hmm. Um so you know uh we, we spoke a few months ago about the, the prior um Palestinian attacks inside the Ga Inside, I, I want to say inside the West Bank, um, there were some fighters who had come together, different forces, and I, you know, we have no way of knowing if these are these are the same forces or or if they're different forces. However, what the Israelis tend to forget is that people who are oppressed are going to fight back. Mm -hmm. it, because whenever you are an oppressor, I think history will show that you become immune. To the suffering that you're causing, mm -hmm. you actually don't care. You actually don't care because you're in charge. You're in charge. I'm the boss. You are my subordinate, and you are to stay in line. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, people are going to say, "Look, we're tired of this, and we we will set the rules for, uh, of engagement, not you." Mm -hmm. So that's that's what happened. That's what happened yesterday. Um, whoever is 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 uh, initiating this conflict. In the sense of initiating an armed self defense, does not care about the rules of engagement because because they have said that they they have to know Israel will will counterattack. They are, they are quite aware of that. Mm. They have to know that. Then I you know so. What will Israel do and have and have the have the fighters taking that into account? Mm -hmm. Because Israel can, can do what it wants to do. But does your but does does your enemy has have they have they already taken that into account? They, I mean that could be traps. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. And also, also as a state, what will it show the world that what what kind of state it is? Because they, this is interesting because they, because because they were clearly caught off guard. Uh. They were yeah. clearly caught off guard. They had no way. I mean, they were clearly caught off guard. Completely. As, as I understand it, there, there, there's a prison somewhere either in Gaza or out, somewhere nearby that, if if it wasn't liberated, was was attacked. They didn't expect to be attacked. No, they did not. Mm. No. So they were caught off guard. Mm. Anyway, every caught off guard is just like. The, the you know the, the um the um Tet offensive during, during the Vietnam War, you just didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They were coming from everywhere. They, they didn't know what to do. I mean, eventually, you know, it it passed, and the United States lost the war. And the United States did lose the war. <laughs> let's, let's be clear about that. The United States did not win in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I think this time, Israel, the CIA, Britain. Maybe France. If what should we do? It's gonna be wow. Hmm. They, they 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 got us. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I I just want to let you let people know. Any way we can support the Palestinian cause, we we should support the Palestinian cause. We should. Yeah. yeah. You know, and people, if it was not a good time, well, when is a good time? 
this is uh yeah tomorrow uh, we have a demonstration here in Mon in Montreal and uh I expect it's going to be big but you know, this is such a surprise, you know, for Israel. They had no idea. In spite of all their intelligence services, in spite of all their network of informers, didn't work. Yes. Yes. And that and that means the network of informers did not get into this group. Yeah. No. Yeah. So they've, you know, the Palestinian society is so well organized now. They know who the informers are and yes. they know how to isolate them, you know. So, yes. So yes. They, yes. So they have uh, evaded, you know, uh, Israel state control. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think that's important to let the Palestinians know job well done on that one. Because yeah. many times, many times, Israel sends its spies in. They have a network of spies and co and collaborators yeah. who are looking to destroy the Palestinian cause. Yeah. And however they were able to avoid detection, they did a good job on that one. Yeah, yeah. And the strategy of, you know, taking prisoners uh, of soldiers and, and uh, civilians, I suppose, nearby, you know, Gaza, that's uh, quite an effective strategy as well. Yeah, I mean, the simpler thing would have been, you know, to, to eliminate, you know, as many people as they could. But that's not, you know, their strategy. That's not, you know, what the message that they're trying to create. They are taking prisoners in order to negotiate. Now, Israel is not going to negotiate. This, this Israeli government is incapable of negotiating. Its whole reason for existence is not to negotiate with the Palestinians. So they're not going to, you know, they're trying to, they're going to use, you know, their air power to bash the Palestinians again. But, you know, it's not going to work. You know, the Palestinians are so united, so into it, you know, that uh, they know that they have to, uh, they have to fight in order to protect themselves because it's either, you know, like... A, a slow war inflicted, you know, for one side, you know, against the Palestinians only, or it's, you know, uh, you know, an open war, you know, between both sides at the same time, which Israel cannot cope with, because they cannot explain, you know, why they're at war with the Palestinians, when in fact, the Palestinians are willing to negotiate. So the government cannot explain, you know, why a war is necessary, first of all. Second of all, this Israeli government, you know, like, what did they have to say about the welcoming of a Nazi into the Canadian House of Commons Parliament here in Canada? Yes, yes. Nothing, uh, nothing, no statement from Israel whatsoever, you know. <laughs> so Unbelievable. Yeah, so what kind or, of government is this, you know, like, is this a government, you know, that claims, you know, to be defending the Jewish people? You know, yeah, they can claim that, but that's just the words, you know, when it actually comes down to it, you know, like, they don't defend the Jewish people. All they're defending, you know, is the military of Israel. That's it. That's all. You know, <laughs> you know, Israel is useless as far as, you know, like his Jewish uh, concerns uh, and Jewish uh, security and Jewish safety is concerned. Israel does nothing to oppose, you know, the, the Nazis, you know, who are pro-Zionist, you know, as well. And Israel has done nothing to denounce, you know, the and some anti-Semites, you know, who are opposed to the presence of Jewish Americans, but who support Israel, well, you know. Well, so, you Abraham, know, what's the story behind this? You know, like, well, you know, like, you know, which is it? You know, like Israel or the Jewish people? You know, like you can choose. And Israel has chosen Israel only, you know, and they couldn't care less about the Jewish people. That's, and that's demonstrated, you know, by the fact that they can't even come out with a statement against the honoring of a Nazi here in Canada. <laughs> Even the Canadian government has not been able to come out with an, you know, uh, you know, a real apology. You know, this is, you know, very scandalous. Now, what's going to happen here in the Jewish community? May, um, may, I speak to that, may I speak to that issue just raised? Yes. Thank you. I want to speak to the issue, the two issues that you just raised. One, now that we know Israel has not taken a stand against a Nazi being feted by a NATO member, mm. a NATO member, mm -hmm. and they said, um, which, with which they have, I'm sure, diplomatic relations with Canada. I'm sure they do. Mm. And they said nothing. Mm. See, what also Zelensky was there and applauding, mm -hmm. physically seen applauding mm -hmm. this fascist, this fascist murderer. Mm -hmm. Ukraine said nothing. Mm -hmm. 
So clearly, at least in public public public's public view, Ukraine and Israel turn up turn up turn up turn an eye or show support for Nazism. Yeah, just back to the Jewish people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's that, that's the second thing that you mentioned that I found interesting. Hmm. If we see Israel, if, if, if Israel purports to be a government which defends people who are Jewish or, or, and or of Israeli ancestry internationally, how could it not say anything about the, the Nazi being feted in Canada? Yeah. It, it brings it brings a true exposure of who they really are. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, because you know, like, and that's, that's a very good point you make. Yeah. Um, because this issue of a government. Let me just say this: one of the real crises, one of the real disasters of the international slave trade and the Berlin Conference is that Black people in, around the world have no Black government they can turn to for support. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Israel is good in that regards, but if it says it's supposed to do something, then they should be called out, called on a carpet to do it. Mm -hmm. And the situation in Montreal, in, in excuse me, in Ottawa, mm -hmm was so egregious, mm. was so scan scandalous for Israel to say nothing requires the Jewish people and the people of Israeli, uh, Israeli citizenship around the world to condemn it in no uncertain terms. And to me, I, like I said about the Canadians, mm. should call for its ouster. Mm -hmm. They should be ousted. Yeah. Some things you just can't do. You can't let certain things slide. Mm. No, you cannot. And when certain offenses are made against your people mm. internationally, mm. you can't let it slide. Mm. You'll say, no, we're opposed to this. Mm. This is an outrage. Even if you just say that and do nothing else, mm. you've done something. Mm -hmm. You have the weight of the government behind you. Mm -hmm. And I still say Canadians must demand the end of the ouster of the government with or without an apology. Yeah, this every, is... every party, every party, every party in the government was applauding the fascist. Mm. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. Social uh, Democrats uh, as well. Yeah. Next, yeah, yeah there, was I mean, one, I, there was one, yeah. though, who wasn't applauding. Good. This came out. It was the wife of Zelensky. She did not applaud. She just sort of tapped her, tapped her hand, you know, but she was, you know, visibly, you know, like, uh, uncomfortable and then yeah. the next day you yeah. know what Zelensky did you know this has not really made the news Zelensky uh, made a declaration in the Ukrainian parliament uh, upholding and, and making the uh, founder of the organization of Ukrainian nationalists OUN oh. which you know to which you know Bandera oh. you know the Nazi you oh. know like was a member of an operative of you know like but the founder was fitted as a national hero of the Ukraine oh yeah oh, yeah 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 okay they, yeah yeah so now they claim to be nationalists okay but do they ever talk about you know the great Ukrainian uh liberator uh who was Machno the anarchist Ukrainian yeah. who is fighting for the independence of the Ukraine against the white army of the of the monarchical uh, aristocrats of the of the white army uh, of uh, Kornilov, you know, and uh, uh, who came into the Ukraine, you know, to attack Russia, and the anarchists, you know, were fighting against uh, the white army, and who was fighting against the anarchists, both the white army and the red oh, army oh, of Trotsky, you know. So the Red Army and the Black Army were fighting each other, you know, because the Red Army wanted to incorporate Ukraine into Russia under, you know, Trotsky, Bronstein. And meanwhile, Lenin, you know, comes out with a proclamation that the Ukraine has a right to self-determination. You know, like it's such a, you know, like a, a mess, you know, when it comes to Ukraine.
Yes, yes, it is. Especially, it is a mess. You know, it, yeah. When anarchists, you know, mess. and the communists were slaughtering each other, you know, like over the Ukraine. And, yeah, Bunda, Ukraine and, and you know, Machno, you know, who was this, you know, uh, great, you know, anarchist, you know, fighter for, you know, the Ukraine and against, you know, the Tsarist Empire, uh, you know, like, it's not even mentioned by Zelensky. Not even mentioned, you know, never mentioned, you know, by any of them. This exposes, you know, that regime, that nationalist regime as being not Ukrainian nationalist, but just, you know, plain, you know, like, you know, fascist. Because, you know, they're just extolling, you know, the fascist Ukrainians. And they have nothing to say about, you know, the anarchist Ukrainian who was the first to fight against the Tsarist Empire for the independence of the Ukraine. And now this Israeli government also, you know, claims to be, you know, nationalist, you know, like, you know, defending the Jewish people. But it's not, you know, didn't have anything to say about, you know, the fitting of the, the Nazi in the Canadian parliament. It has nothing to say about, you know, the Zionist supporters in the United States who are a bunch of fascists, you know, anti-Semites. And, you know, like, what's the use of Israel then, you know, if it claims to be there existing, you know, to defend Jewish people, you know, and that the Jewish people should be supporting it because it's defending the Jewish people. Where is that coming from? That's just words. It's not real. It is unreal. Well, well, let me ask you this. You raised a good point to make me think about something. What is what could be the role of the Jewish people in the diaspora? towards this question. Because I'm still saying this question is far from dead. Mm. And that people have the responsibility to bring Israel to task on this. Mm. That's my view. And mm. who who better to do it yeah. than the Jewish community in the diaspora? Yeah. I mean, or, or perhaps there are other, perhaps there are better ways of doing this. But I do think what you just said mm. needs to be amp- amplified and shared broadly mm. that Israel said nothing. Mm-hmm. That's right. And Israel, Israel can't say, can't not say anything. Mm. If anybody must condemn this, it must be Israel. Mm. And the fact they have not mm. mm-hmm. yeah. is a statement. Is a statement. Yeah. And also. Just like the Jewish community said, it doesn't want to let you in as a as a, as a second generation Holocaust survivor. Even those organizations mm. have to be questioned, have to be questioned. Yeah. On well, this, you cannot be silent. On this, you cannot be silent. Yeah. Anyway, so. there's been a there's been a move, you know, this week as well, uh, probably as a result of uh, of the House of Commons uh, uh, fitting of the Nazi and Nazism, basically. Uh, Mondo Weiss, which is one of the main uh, Jewish opposition groups, Mondo Weiss has come out, you know, with a new organization called Jews Against White Supremacy. And oh, what, they, oh what they mean by white supremacy is Zionism, <laughs> you know, an explicitly anti-Zionist organization, you know, has now developed, which is picking up, you know, the Jewish Bundes concepts of fighting against uh, anti-Semitism in the name of the Jewish people, but not in the name of, you know, a nationalist, you know, state uh, uh, organization that is only, you know, seeking to build its own power and uh, and uh, develop its own national bourgeoisie. No, that's not the way to go. The way to go is to for Jewish people to take control of their own communities, you know, where they are living, you know. Here in Canada, we have, it's already started, you know, the Jewish organizations here have have broken, you know, from the Zionist, you know, agenda, and they've all denounced, you know, the Canadian government, even though the Liberal Party was, you know, a favorite of the Jewish you know, community organizations for so long, Good. They denounced this, this government, and, uh, you know, they're calling for the prosecution of Nazi war criminals. You know, there's a st- there was a, a big uh, inquiry done. You know, the Duchenne Commission of inquiry into uh, the presence of uh, presence of Nazis. You know, who were allowed into Canada after the uh, Holocaust. And uh, you know, this uh, study has you know the list of names of you know of all these Nazis here in Canada, and that part of the study you know was kept secret by the Canadian government. Now the Jewish organization is saying, you know, we've got to, you know, make these names public and these people have got to be prosecuted. You know, Good. this has never Good. been done before, you know, and, I, and now it's Good. being done. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm, I, um, I would like for that story to get out. If you could please um, provide me with some news clips, links, or any sources 
about that story. What I'm, what I'm saying is this story has to stay alive. Mm-hmm. If we don't keep it alive, Abraham, that story will be killed by the mass media. Yeah. They won't, oh, it's over with now. You know, he, 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 uh, but I also want to talk about can you give us any updates on uh, Trudeau's so called apology? Well, I heard he apologized about something. What exactly happened this week on that? Nothing. You know, I think he's trying to ignore it, you know, like, uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, like they're, they think it's going to blow over, you know, but, um, you know, the leading, you know, Jewish figure in Canada, Erwin Kotler from the Liberal Party, a candidate for the Liberal Party, I ran against him in an election one time even, uh, and uh, he is supposedly the the, uh, the voice of the Jewish community in Canada, you know, when it comes to civil rights and all this, you know, and he's a great defender of Rwanda and and uh, supposedly, you know, like he was defending Mandela and all this, you know, he's supposed to be a big name. Okay, Professor, uh, uh, okay, uh, well, he has come out, you know, calling on the Canadian government, you know, to uh, to to reveal the secret parts of the Dusant Commission of Inquiry into the presence of Nazis in Canada. So that means he's breaking, you know, with the Liberal Party leadership, which is a very good sign. So if he does it, then all, all the rest of the Jewish community is going to break from the Liberal Party as well. You know, you know, it's going to split. You know, some are going to go to the Conservative Party, some are going to go to the NDP, right? Which is led by a Sikh leader, a Sikh man, Sikh Canadian, and uh, so it, it provides, you know, some something of an alternative, you know, to the uh, Anglo-Saxon supremacy, you know. Re- and it's uh, and it's uh, collaborators amongst the pal- uh, amongst the uh, Quebecois, like Trudeau. So you know that power base, you know, is going to be broken. It's going to be cracked up. It's going to be, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be you know bypassed here in Canada as a result of this uh, of the scandal. Now, <laughs> and. You know, now I, I I can also go back into the Jewish Community Center. You know, next month. You know, to uh, to uh, to speak to this. You know, I can actually I have you know the credibility you know to speak to the Jewish community now. You know that the Zionists do not have. You know the Zionists you know do not have the backup of the Israel government even. You know they're they're cut loose. You know now you know they're they're you know having to fight you know anti-semitism on their own you know without the backing of the israel government because israel government is supporting ukraine supporting Zelensky, and yeah, it, in effect supporting the nazis you know so you know yeah, like they're kind of contradiction i wish we could do a show specifically on that because this is again for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora in canada in Israel, we need to show how support for Ukraine mm. is on its face against the national interest of, of Jewish people. Yeah, yeah. So now we can However, look at the Jewish people as a nation, but not right. Israel nation, not the right. Israel state, you know. So now we oh. see there's a fundamental division between you know the Israeli you know a nation state and the Jewish people as a nation, two different things. Yeah, I, I I really do think that that is a idea we need to deepen our discussion on. Yeah, and the reason why I say that is if we can deepen that discussion and create some uh, avant-garde breaking ground discussions, conversations about that, we'll be serving historically the greater needs of of this broad Jewish nation that, that you're talking about. Yes. And because then Israel, because Israel is a fraud. Yeah. Yeah. The people who live the people who live in Israel are not fraudsters per se, hmm. but Israel is a fraud. Yeah. And this recent example and what you're talking about can show the fraudulent nature of what it claims to be yeah. and what it actually is doing. Yeah. Because all of us are a hypocrite. Do you, do, you, do you march? Do you talk? Do you walk the walk that you talk? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. this division is going to uh, crack open, you know, the relationship, you know, with the Palestinians as well. 
because Israel has refused to negotiate. So now that the Palestinians are retaliating, you know, uh, and, and the Jewish people know that Israel government is not going to be speaking for them. You know, Jewish people are going to say, well, you know, like Israel, <clears throat> get down to it, you know, negotiate with the Palestinians, you know, because obviously you, uh, you know, are not solving the problem, you know, not even by military means. You know, Israel is incapable militarily of stopping the Palestinians from resistance. Okay, so that's exposed. You know, Israel's military might is exposed now. So either they, you know, uh, increase military, you know, repression of the Palestinians, which means, you know, increased resistance. So either, you know, you know, the Zionists, uh, you know, will go for that, but the Jewish people were not, you know, Jewish people were going to say, you know, like, why do we want, you know, a bigger war? No way, you know, like when this can be resolved, you know, by negotiations. And then it'll become revealed that Hamas has actually offered to negotiate with the state of Israel on the basis of mutual recognition of of each other, you know. So, you know, uh, Hamas <clears throat> has been asked, you know, to recognize the state of Israel. Okay, so Hamas has replied, okay, we'll recognize Israel if Israel recognizes Palestine, you know, as a as a, as a negotiating partner, which means that it has, you know, right to independence. Now, <clears throat> you know, when this becomes, you know, uh, uh, it revealed, you know, like, you know, when the, when, the, when the confrontation goes on for a while, you know, and then finally, you know, like, uh, Hamas is going to say, okay, you know, like, you want to end this? Okay, we're prepared to end this, you know, but only by negotiations. So are you prepared to negotiate? Yes or no? You know, and they can say this in front of the whole world. And so, you know, when Hamas says this, you know, the Jewish people are going to say, yes, yes, let's negotiate. You know, let's end this, you know, war, finally. And then Israel say, no, no, we don't want to negotiate, you know, <laughs> because, you know, Hamas is a terrorist organization. Well, you know, if Hamas is a terrorist organization, so is Israel. <laughs> you know, there's no difference. You know, war is war. So, you know, I think this could be a breaking point. And uh, beginning, you know, with the uh, w with the uh, Nazi, Nazi gate, you know, in Ottawa, Canada. You know, Nazi that's a good you know, name for a Nazi gate. It's a very good name for a Nazi gate. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think what you just also you just had a you had another another brilliant uh idea there to use this to use the current offensive by, by Hamas and the Palestinians against Israel. Use it use it diplomatically and politically. Yeah. Because what you're saying is these military exchanges are due to us are due to the political oppression and economic oppression huh. so why don't we why don't why can't the international community support the right of self-determination of the palestine and demand negotiations yeah because when when, when israel takes the position of ukraine and ukraine will not negotiate with russia Israel would not negotiate with the Palestinians. Uh, yeah. Then you are then you are equating Israel with Ukraine. Yeah. And also the United States. Yeah. Yeah. As Israel backers. Because a peace, a peace framework could be created. This is good. Yeah. A framework for peace that could be monitored. It could be monitored, could be established. Yeah. But Israel does not want to be monitored. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Israel. But if the international Jewish community is written, the Israeli community internationally applies its its soft power and its prep uh, its pressure, its status, if it will once again establish its status, huh. Israel could be forced to negotiate. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it it would probably take the international and international movement of predominantly Jewish people. That's yeah. what it would take. Yeah, yeah, that's what it will take. You know, because the rest that's of the, you know pressure doesn't work on Israel. You know, like no, right. it doesn't matter. You know, who says anything? You know, you know, United States can you know like even you know is ignored by Israel. So right, right. But if it if it, if it led by a broad based peace oriented Jewish led hmm. international movement. Even if Israel says it is ignoring it, 
It cannot ignore. It no, can it can't you, ignore the Jewish people. You, yeah. You, you say you speak for us, okay? Mm -hmm. We're 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 not saying you don't need to exist as a state. No, mm -hmm. we're saying this conflict needs to end. Yeah. And this recent military attack on Israel is an indication of a conflict that needs to come to an end. Yeah. Yeah, so Hamas is in a position now to offer peace negotiations. You know, right. can say to Israel, you know, right. we're willing to negotiate. You know, for peace, for a peace settlement. <laughs> and, and, and so and, and, Israel is not going to accept that. And so the Jewish people are going to say, you know, like we want peace. Therefore, you know, like we're supporting. You know, we would have to support. You know, the Hamas demand against yeah. uh, you know Israel's uh, intransigence. So, uh, you know, this is a dividing point. You know, this is a breaking point, you know, of the Jewish community well, from the state of Israel. Yeah. I I, 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 I would, I, I think we should come back to this in subsequent conversations. Hmm. What is the, what is the chatter among the uh, diaspora, within the diaspora? Hmm. Are there people in Israel that can be worked with along this lines? Yeah. I, I think, again, you made a very good point. This this weekend's uh, military um, advances are the result of a historical oppression. Mm -hmm. That is why this this not occurring because there's some evil people in in the West Bank, I mean, or in Gaza that hate us, and we have to defend our. No, no, that's not what's going on. Yeah, yeah. This is due to something historically you have done. You set the West Bank up. It doesn't, West Bank isn't something that exists in reality. It's something you set up. Yeah. You put somebody over there, yeah. you lock them up, and the, the guys in the West Bank, you create this. Huh. Therefore, you're responsible for ending it. Yeah. And how could these young men be so desperate to follow, to fire rockets, to attack your cities, to ram cars, to, um, try to liberate prisoners, to take Israeli prisoners um, prisoner, I mean, Israeli soldiers prisoner. Yeah. That's an act of military sophistication due to um, desperation. Yeah. But they have no this, is only, this is only the beginning, you know, because this is Hamas fighting. Then there's Islamic Jihad. Then there's Fatah. Which just ha has to come into this as well, you know. If Israel escalates, the Fatah is going to have to come in to defend the Palestinians. Then there's Hezbollah in Lebanon, ready, willing, and able, you know, to take on Israel, you know, from the north. <laughs> you know, this is, and then you know, like if you know, there's even the possibility that you know, Syria might do something about the Golan Heights, you know, to take it back, that Syrian territory, you know, the, uh, and then. You know, if it grows, you know, to that point, then Egypt can step in as well. So it's, uh, this is, you know, big stuff. This is, you know, uh, uh, something that Israel cannot contend with, you know, and Israel is going to have to uh, either go crazy or uh, have to back down. And this government, you know, uh, they're already, you know, like uh, only standing on one leg, you know, because of the protests, you know, from the, from the, uh, from the uh, opposition Zionists, you know, the Zionists who are opposing the Zionist government of Israel, you know, like is there as well, still ongoing. And every week, you know, big demonstrations of 50,000, 100,000, you know, this is happening at the same time. And I don't think it's going to stop, you know, because of this confrontation. It's going to continue. And they had better learn, you know, to develop a program, you know, to uh, call for negotiations. And because that's the only sort of program that's possible. You know, otherwise, the conflict continues and increases. So, you know, they have no choice but to call for negotiations. So I look forward, you know, to the <clears throat> Israel Zionist opposition, you know, picking up a demand, you know, to oppose this government as well on the basis of calling for negotiations with Hamas. So let me ask you this. What do you so you're what you're saying is when Israel attacks attacks Gaza, which we have to assume is already doing or will soon do within the next 24 hours. Yeah. You're saying you're saying that Fatah and other formations will be required to engage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's already, you know, like the basis for this uh opposition in the popular resistance committees and uh right. the brigades, you know, of Jenin and Nablus, you know, exist already. 
Right. And, uh, you know, this goes beyond, you know, like, so, you know, this includes, you know, members of both uh, Fatah, Islamic Jihad, you know, Hamas, and uh, DP, uh, DPLF, uh, the Marxist organization. They're all in the popular resistance committees. So the uh, they're all connected, you know, and they can all, you know, unify the opposition and the resistance, you know, uh, on this basis and increase the level of confrontation with Israel in the West Bank as well as in Gaza. So, you know, I think that uh, this week is going to be, you know, uh, determining a event in the history of uh, Palestine. And uh, we can look forward, you know, to um, Israel being forced to back down. I think this is when it can happen. And, uh, you know, like <laughs> Israel, the United States were, you know, trying to negotiate, you know, uh, normalization with Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and Saudi Arabia is not going to, you know, establish, you know, diplomatic relations with Israel in the midst, you know, of a confrontation, you know, like this, you know, with with the resistance, Palestinian resistance. And in fact, you know, you know, Saudi Arabia is going to be in a position to demand, you know, that Israel negotiate with Hamas to end this confrontation. So Israel is going to get the pressure, you know, from all around. So if, you know, Saudi Arabia demands, you know, Israel negotiate, the United States is going to have to as well. Otherwise, they would break their relations with Saudi Arabia, more so than than it has already been done. You know, economically, you know, Saudi Arabia has broken from the United States. Now it's a question of political break from Israel uh, and the United States, you know, as a result of this confrontation here. So we don't have much time left, but, uh, you know, I think you're you're right on, you know, to, to uh, you know, judge this as a determining event in the history, you know, of Palestine. You know, this is the point at which, you know, there's going to be a break from the Israel by the United States, by Saudi Arabia, and by the Jewish community as well. Well, let's, uh, uh, I appreciate talking to you, Abraham, and I hope that next week or our next show, we continue this conversation and bring some updates and yeah. further analysis. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is a determining factor. Great. Right.